from Malawi farmers to international diplomats, the topic on everyone's minds fertilizer. 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 Is fertilizer. About 20% of Malawi's population is facing severe food insecurity, exacerbated by a lack of fertilizer. Malawi is one of the 48 nations identified by the IMF as at risk of famine because of a lack of food and nutrients, another word for fertilizer. The world relies on a select few nations for most of its fertilizer, Russia, Belarus and China. And that's a strategic risk. They dominate a large part of this $250 billion industry. And the problem is imports from these countries have been drying up or have stopped altogether. Last year highlighted Russia's role as an exporter of around one-fifth of all nutrients. Given the difficulty of getting those shipments amid Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine and already strained global trade. In 2021, China restricted fertilizer exports to protect its domestic supply. Then you have the sanctions on Russian ally Belarus, preventing exports of potash, a key ingredient in mineral fertilizer. So the market is tight, and as is often the case, the result is an unequal divide between the rich and poor countries in a global scramble to get more fertilizer. The crisis, however, is creating some big winners. Here we are in Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, we're outside of the world's largest fertilizer company, Cory Potash Mine. So behind me you can see this product. It's about the same consistency as table salt, but it's still used in agriculture, uh, sprayed on the fields. Nutrient mines potash, one of the three main types of fertilizer. It does so from a 400 million year old rock known as the prairie evaporite formation, using machine cut tunnels to extract the ore. Nutrient is targeting a 40% increase in production. Canada is the number one producer of potash. And Brazil's agriculture minister traveled here immediately after the invasion of Ukraine to secure more shipments. Another winner from the volatility of the market is Morocco. The country is home to 70% of the world's reserves of phosphate, a core nutrient used in fertilizer. The industry is thriving and some have called the country out for using its fertilizer for political ends, including to further its aims in a dispute over the Western Sahara. A Moroccan news outlet reported that a shipment of fertilizer to Peru was cancelled after the country renewed ties with the Saharawis. Peru is one of the countries suffering from the fertilizer shortage. Latin America imports as much as four-fifths of the fertilizer it uses. And Peru has become a rare success story in its fruit and vegetable sector in recent years. It's grown to become the world's number one exporter of blueberries. Now that progress is at stake, as its thousands of farmers struggle and even protest the inability of the government to secure more fertilizer to plant their crops. The worldwide demand for fertilizer is far-reaching and intensifying. Even the US is providing 500 million in grants to increase American-made fertilizer production. And in Ukraine, where Russia's invasion disrupted the nation's sizable grain exports while setting the global crisis in motion, the agriculture minister says a lack of fertilizer will impact the summer grain harvest. The core supply chain issues causing the trouble show no signs of easing. As the war in Ukraine enters its second year, the United Nations says fertilizer remains stuck in European ports, with some shipping insurers unwilling to cover Russian cargoes, while agriculture banks are unable to make transactions with Russian suppliers. So poor countries like Malawi remain dependent upon fertilizer donations. For farmers like Moses Mikaeli, who can't afford to buy the fertilizer brokered by the government and sold at 14 times the price of 2021, this year promises to be very difficult. <laughs> 